All right, so we looked at linear equations in 4.1, just graphing them. Um, linear regression is going to tell us how to find these lines. Uh, find the equation of a line. Uh, in, real, in most real life applications, um, data will not follow a perfectly straight line. Um, however, it'll usually be, we might have roughly linear data, which we kind of saw in the last section. And so we'll find an equation that fits best. And that's what regression is. So let's start with crickets. So it, it's a fact that they actually chirp faster when the weather is warm. So random fact we learned in statistics class. Um, and so you can see in the graph below that as temperature increases, they chirp faster. Chirps per second increases. So I have a data table of X is my degrees and Y is the chirps per second. And I graphed this one for you to save us a little bit of time. When we, um, we'll get into StatCrunch later and have StatCrunch make graphs for us. And so it kind of, if we look at the pattern, um, it's roughly linear, right? It's not a perfect line by any means, right? But there's definitely roughly a line in there. So I would say the relationship is roughly linear. And I also notice that it's increasing, right? It's going upward. So those are the two ways I would describe it. Roughly linear and increasing. Um, so what we're going to try to figure out in this section is what line fits best. Is it this line? Is it this line? Is it this line? Right, this line. So that's what we're going to mess with in this section. So the line that fits best would be the one with the smallest error. And so in our next example, we're going to talk about how do we calculate error and decide which one has the least. So let's look at this next example called the least squares criterion. It's kind of, um, we're going to figure out the square error. So I have a data set. I have it twice. And I come up with two different lines. So we'll call line A, I have in blue, is 0.5 plus 1.25x. And I've already graphed the line for you. And I'm going to compare it to another line, negative 0.25 plus 1.5x. I think overall both lines kind of look like they fit the points. If you can't see the points, they're right here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right. Overall, they both kind of fit the pattern of the points. So we're going to measure the error to decide which one is better. So the error is just y minus y hat. That's this column right here. I organize it in a table. So we need to find all the y hat values before we can find the error. So again, y is the actual data, and then y hat is from the line. So you'll notice, let's color code. The x's are from actual data, the y's are from actual data, and then y hat is from the blue equation. So if we want to find y hat for each one, we're going to plug in the x values. So 0.5 plus 1.25, and then we'll plug in 1. The second column happens to also be 1. So this again could be um, like when we were looking at TV size. They were the same size, but they were different prices. That's okay that the y's are different. But the y hats will be the same. And then we'll plug in 2, and we'll plug in 4. So we're just finding error. So let's find the y hats, and then we'll find error after. So 0.5 plus 1.25 times 1. Oops. And then we'll do 1 again, which we really don't need to do, right? But we'll get 1.75 twice. And then we'll plug in 2. And then we'll plug in 4, and then I'll come back to the table. So we get 3 and 5.5. So let's fill those in. So these are the predicted values from the line. So these are the actual points on the line now versus the points of the data. So that's hopefully we see the difference. 
So the blue ones are on the line, the black ones are the actual data values. I'll make those orange to color code. So oops, those are, there we go. Those are these values. So then error is how far off are we? So we're just gonna do um, the real value, the real data value minus the predicted value. The real data value minus the predicted value. So if you don't believe me on the first one, I already did it but we got negative 0.75 and we'll just continue. Two is the real data value minus 0.75. 1.75, excuse me, 0.25. Next column will be two minus three. Two is the real value, three is the predicted value, negative one. And then the last one I already did, 0.5. And then there is an issue, right? Kind of with standard deviation, those positive and negatives, um, Technically, we could have really big positive and really big negative error, and they would cancel each other out. So we're going to square the errors. So this is just the error squared in the last column. So make sure you put parentheses on those negative numbers, negative 0.75 squared. Your answer should be positive. If it's not, the negative sign is an issue. 0.25 squared. Um, no negative sign, so parentheses don't matter too much. 0.0625, negative 1 squared is 1, right? But if you're not sure, 1. And then 0.5 squared is 0.25. So these are measuring squared errors. If you're visual, um, it's measuring these boxes, the size of the boxes. Right, so basically it's saying this distance is negative one, but if I do negative one times negative one, I get a one. So that's the area of this box. So just for those of you who are a little more visual. And it'll be easy to compare the two sets in a second. And then 0.25 would be this one. And then we're not really interested in an error for a single point. We're interested in overall error. So we're going to go ahead and add them up. and 1.875. We call this the sum of the square errors. And if this is too long to write, it's SSE for sum of square errors. But it's just basically finding the total area of those boxes. The boxes are square errors. So 1.875, is that good, is that bad? Who knows? Um, and so that's why we need a second example to compare to. So we don't know if this is good or bad, but we will know if it's better than this line. So let's look visually um, at the boxes. So if we look at all these errors, I'm going to make them different colors again so I can mark them later. But if I look at all these boxes, do they look bigger or smaller overall? To me, I think overall, they look smaller. So I would say the area of the boxes looks smaller, which makes me think this one will have less square error. Um, but let's go ahead and check that out. And so this is a different equation now, same points. So, uh, sorry, I'm clicking things. The Y values haven't changed, the X values haven't changed, but the Y hats have changed because we're looking at a new equation. Negative 0.25 plus one and a half X. So we will learn how to find these lines shortly. Right now we're just comparing two lines. So we're gonna do the same thing and find all the Y hat values from the line. So we'll do negative 0.25 plus one and a half times one, right, oops plus one and a half times one, one, plug in all the x's. y hat is negative 0.25. I'm not gonna do one again. You can just repeat that number, two, and then we'll plug in four. So these are representing the points on the line. And we'll compare those to the actual data values. So negative 0.25 plus one and a half times one, Second enter is your best friend, saves you a lot of time. And so we get 
1.25, we get 1.25 again, we get 2.75, and we get 5.75. Let me know if you have questions. Uh, the sooner you ask questions, the better, right before we build more stuff on it. And so then we're going to find the error and the squared error. So I find it more efficient to go horizontally, unlike last time. So what I mean by that is I would do 1 minus 1.25. You get negative 0.25, and then you can immediately just square that answer. So that way you don't have to type again. So then we'll do 2 minus 1.25. So we get an error of 0.75 and a squared error of 0.5625. And then 2 minus 2.75, a negative 0.75 error, and then squared error. You don't have to worry about negatives because the calculator is keeping track of that. You get the same squared error. And then 6 minus 5.75. Square it. Cool. And so, again, if you're visual, um, these are just the areas of the boxes. So the first one is the orange one, because we're at one, and we're slightly below. The second one was this one. The third one, we're now at two, so that's why we're here. And then the fourth one, we're at four. And so that's this box up here. So again, I think this has less square error. The squares overall are smaller. But let's go ahead and add them up to find the sum of the square error. Cool. 1.25 is the SSE, sum of square error. So I don't know what 1.25 means, but I know it's better than 1.875. So which line fits better? Line B, because it only has, it has less error. Um, does that mean it's the best possible line? No, we've only looked at two lines, right? There's like so many lines. Um, we don't know yet. And so that's what regression will do. Um, so the line that best fits the data is the one with the least possible sum of square errors, which is a very complicated thing to figure out. Basically, basically we're like minimizing this number. Which is a very complicated thing to do. Um, and this is called the regression equation. Don't worry, the calculator is going to do the crazy math for you. Otherwise, it's a little insane. So before we do that example, just a few symbols, right? Y hat is a um, predicted Y value, right? These come from equations where Y is an actual data value. So in the next video, we'll figure out how to find this regression equation. It's hard to say that a lot, regression equation. Um, it's going to do like this crazy calculus problem to minimize that number. But don't worry, the calculator does it all for you. We're not doing calculus. So I'll see you in the next video to find regression. You absolutely need your calculator in the next one. So I'll see you over there.